I was invited here to give you a sense of the transformation that we have seen in the great city of Cincinnati during my time as mayor. And uh, I'm going to talk through a, a few projects that we worked on. I'm going to show you some slides because you can't get out of here without seeing slides. And then I'm going to answer some questions and I, I hope that you can uh, follow me as I try to like, you know, flip slides and flip these notes all at the same time. So let me start by reading the introduction of one of the State of the City addresses that I did when I was mayor. This is what I said. I came out and I thanked everybody for being there and I just started talking. I said, times are tough across the country. Banks are not lending money, people are out of work, and citizens are worried about their futures. Two guys decide that they're going to go into business for themselves. Let's, let's call them Bill and Jim. So Bill and Jim, against all odds, invest their wisdom, their time, their money, and they build this company. And all kinds of people are telling them, now is not the right time. You should not go into business now. You cannot start a company in these economic times. If those two men had listened to the naysayers, Cincinnati would not be home to the largest consumer products company in the world, Procter and Gamble. William Proctor and James Gamble were those two gentlemen. Times might be tough right now, but that doesn't mean that we stop. That doesn't mean that we give up. That's when you fight the hardest, when we're facing some of the toughest challenges of the day. Bill and Jim faced those challenges in 1837, and I'm sure they heard plenty of negative things about what they were doing. Now's not the time. They say the same thing today. The naysayers keep saying, uh, we need to slow down, we need to pull back. This is not the right time. Well, people use the phrase in these economic times as an excuse to pull back, as a reason to not do things. But I think they have it backwards. It's in these economic times that you put money into things that you know are going to grow your future. That's when you take bold steps and you do the things that are going to make you prosper. And that's exactly what we did in the city of Cincinnati, and that's how we grew. So what are the elements of a successful city, a 21st century city today? They're actually very similar to the same elements that led cities in the 20th century to success. A strong urban core, density, walkable communities, integrated transportation systems, all built around a city's set of assets, where people live and where they work. Those are strategies from the 20th century that worked, and they created strong, dynamic cities all across our country. And those were, those were smart growth strategies. We didn't call them that uh, back then, but that's what they are. They built strong cities. So today, those smart growth strategies that are leading the resurgence of cities are being implemented all across our country. And it's uh, my belief that by returning to those same strategies that we're able to return some cities to their previous glory. That's what's at the heart of smart growth. So let's go back for a minute. I want to, I want to tell you about Cincinnati. So uh, like a lot of older <clears throat> Midwestern cities, we saw our best times uh, from around the turn of the 20th century up to about the 1960s. Uh, we uh, you know, had all kinds of great things going on in our city. Uh, but in the late 50s, early 60s, people started to, to move out. They started to go. Uh, into the suburbs. Our economy suffered from a loss of manufacturing. Uh, our downtown closed up shop at 5 o'clock. And uh, everybody raced home, and the city seemed to languish for a number of decades. And our biggest problem was that we had really lost our way. We lost our mojo. Uh, we had forgotten that we were this great and progressive city. We had forgotten uh, that we had this great history. And that was crazy to me, because that was in stark contrast to uh, what I thought about when I thought about our ancestors who built such a great city. And I thought about the creation of Procter & Gamble and the Kroger Company. We're talking about uh, the city of Cincinnati, a city that taxed itself in the 1870s to build an interstate railroad, one that we still have today, produces about $20 million a year uh, for our budget. This is the uh, first city to formally adopt a comprehensive plan in 1925. This is a progressive city. I mean, things are going on here. But I'll tell you, a half century of population loss will really take a toll on your psyche. So we had turned into this, you know, city of we can't do it, of it won't work here. You know, things, things, you know, we, we just got really down on ourselves and people were just, you know, 
Huh. It's not going to work here. And I said, well, I want to work. Well, because Cincinnati's different. It's different here. You know, they acted like, you know, wind didn't blow in our city. So, you know, <laughs> like we couldn't do anything right. We just couldn't do anything right. But there was this pervasive attitude that it was just terrible and everything was awful. I wanted to bring us back, back to being a cutting edge city, back to a city with strong leadership, visionary leadership. So I ran, I won, and I set about trying to change people's attitudes about the city of Cincinnati. And I reminded people of, of you know, why this city was so great in the first place and what we really needed to do to be able to take on these tough issues. And I declared, I remember in another speech, I declared that Cincinnati was a city worthy of investment, a city worthy of investment. And people kind of reacted to that because I don't think they had seen it that way before. And I said it and I meant it and I called on people to be active and engaged in the resurgence of Cincinnati. And I called on people to come back downtown. I mean, it's the simplest thing, come back downtown. Because the focus on downtown is critical. People assess the vitality of your entire city just by looking at downtown. So we needed to bring the energy back. We needed to uh, tear down the skywalks. We had these skywalks in Cincinnati, these elevated walkways that kept people off the streets. So we started tearing those down, bringing people back down onto the streets, forcing them back into their own community. And so we also focused on revitalizing our public square, Fountain Square. Now, before I was mayor, uh, 3CDC was created. 3CDC stands for the Cincinnati City Center Development Corporation. 3CDC, you cannot say that fast. You can say 3CDC fast. Uh, but it's a, it's a 501c3, and uh, they are doing some great work. Now, I'm gonna try to work the slide thing now because because see, that's 3CDC, see there it is. It says the Cincinnati Center City Development Corporation, for those of you who can't see it in the back. And uh, it's a nonprofit, it was started in 2003. Uh, it's a combination of public funding and private investment that leverages even more money to take on great challenges. Uh, they operate two private development funds, the Cincinnati New Markets Fund and the Cincinnati Equity Fund. Uh, that are worth more than $250 million at this point in time. So I'll get into some of those details a little bit later. Uh, but 3CDC is governed by a board uh, of 30 corporate leaders. These are the top corporations in the city of Cincinnati that make up 3CDC. So 3CDC works collaboratively with the state of Ohio and the city of Cincinnati, of course. And uh, again, we're fortunate to have such a very strong corporate community in our city. Uh, in order to be able to get things done. So Fountain Square has been our, uh, well, I should have shown you that slide before. See, it, usually somebody pushes these buttons for me, so I have to do this myself. These are the priorities, uh, 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 great uh, civic spaces, high density mixed use development, uh, the preservation of historic structures and the improvement of streetscapes. And I can't read the last thing over there because my doctor uh, is not very good. <laughs> So uh, I think that says creating diverse mixed income neighborhoods uh, supported by local businesses. So those are the priorities of 3CDC. So in the 1970s, uh, we built a, a, uh, a new stadium. Actually, I think it was built in 1969. It was Riverfront Stadium. The, the sports fans will be familiar with Riverfront Stadium. Uh, it was a fantastic place, at least I thought. Uh, but by the 1990s, uh, it was old. And so, you know, because that's a long time to have a stadium from, you know, 1969 to 1994. That's like a long time, right? And so uh, the stadium was, was torn down and there was this plan hatched to build two new stadiums because you have to have, see, this is the old stadium. You have to have a couple new stadiums because we have two teams. We have a football team and a baseball team. So each of them had to have their own separate stadium. This is what the scene looks like now. And so now I have to pick up this other piece. So this is the new uh, baseball stadium, and this is the football stadium, and this is the Freedom Center. And all of the space that you see between the two is the area that is planned as the bank's development. So you can see this is a rendering of what the site would then look like when it's completely built out. This is 10 phases in total, uh, and we have, uh, started construction on uh, the, just the second phase uh, that I will show you in a moment. 
And this is a continuation of phase one. And this is what it looks like now. And this is a picture of opening day. And again, I'm there. You can see me. I'm wearing red. <laughs> right there, I think. And so there's also a 45-acre uh, park that goes along with, uh, with the Banks project. Uh, this is a rendering, a really like a not good one, uh, but a not good rendering of uh, phase two, where uh, GE has announced that they're going to bring their global operations center to Cincinnati and, and headquarter it there, and they're bringing 2,000 jobs with it. Now I want to tell you about the Over the Rhine neighborhood. Um, you can see by this map the proximity of Over the Rhine to the Central Business District. So this is Central Parkway, and this used to be a canal back in the day. This is all the Central Business District here, and this area is all Over the Rhine. And, uh, you know, the area was, was settled by uh, German immigrants uh, in the 1850s, 60s, 70s, and many of them were reminded of the Rhine River when they looked at the canal. So when you crossed the canal, you were going over the Rhine. That's how the community got its, uh, its name. And it was a thriving uh, neighborhood. Uh, there were lots of businesses there. There were bars and, and, and beer gardens and uh, beer brewers and lots of theaters and restaurants and people, lots and lots and lots of people. There were 45,000 people uh, in this area at the turn of the century. And that number declined by the time I came into office to about 8,000 people. So you can see a dramatic drop. But about 90% of the building stock that went up in the 1880s was still there in 2005. So the uh, area had 500 vacant buildings. There were 700 vacant lots. There were more than 1,600 vacant housing units and a lot of work to be done. So I, I described 3CDC. 3CDC uh, started working in that area, and you can get a sense of what it looked like before. So they uh, sort of started acquiring buildings. They started land banking. They started getting the properties under control, uh, which is what you're seeing there. And uh, then they started their work. So this map, uh, this is supposed to be red. This color here is supposed to be red. It doesn't look red to me. I don't know if I'm colorblind or not. Uh, but these are all the buildings that they land banked. These are the buildings that have been completed since 2005. And actually, there are several more that have been completed since then. And the buildings in blue are the buildings that are currently under construction. So I'm going to go back for a second so you can see that transformation. The land bank completed under construction. And so these, these are some before and after uh, pictures I want to show you. This is right at the corner of 12th and, and Vine, which is really where Over the Rhine starts as you come out of the business community. Uh, this is the after. This is before, just a shell. This is after. Before, there has been some new construction in the area. This is after. That's before, and that's after. Before, and after. So far, the city has invested, and this is specifically in Over the Rhine with 3CDC, the city has invested $98 million, $98 million, and that has leveraged more than eight hundred million dollars in private redevelopment funds, eight hundred million dollars. So that's a, a really dramatic. So Washington Park is a is another um, area of over the Rhine and this park was developed in the 1880s. Um, it had become a haven for homeless people to hang out. It was bleak. Uh, not a place you want to take your family necessarily, uh, but uh, this was another area that we invested in. You can see what it looked like before. Uh, this is what it looks like after. We put $50 million into this park. There was a school uh, at this end of the park that was demolished, 
And then underneath, we, we, we dug down and, and uh, built a subterranean parking structure there. So we were able to extend the park all the way north uh, to 14th Street. And uh, it's been a huge success. The garage holds 450 cars. Uh, this is a huge civic lawn uh, that is used for all kinds of uh, programmed events. There are uh, feature, water features for the kids as a playground. Um, and now people from all walks of life come and enjoy uh, Washington Park. So we've worked on our riverfront. We've worked on our city center. We worked in our most historic neighborhood over the Rhine. And it's one of the things that has people talking about what's going on in Cincinnati across this country. Uh, smart growth strategies are making way for the arrival of the 21st century city. And I think the cities that uh, embrace smart growth policies are the cities that are going to grow. These are the cities that are going to uh, see things happen. The cities that pay attention to their historic uh, preservation efforts, the cities that pay attention to uh, integrated transportation systems, the cities that have dynamic leadership, the cities with bold, visionary leaders. Um, that's why I think gatherings like this are so important because you, you, you get uh, reinvigorated, right? And you, uh, people are brought together and you see what's going on in other parts uh, of the country. And you go back, hopefully, hopefully, you go back recharged. And so the, the charge for tonight is that you all are experts in all of your various fields. You know a lot of things that your elected leaders may not necessarily know. And I will tell you right now that when I became the mayor, I didn't necessarily know everything that I'm here talking to you about today. I do, though, because somebody got in my ear. There was some uh, planner who said, Mayor, here's how this needs to work. Or there was some uh, transportation expert or some preservationist or some uh, economic development expert that said, Mayor, here's what you need to do in order to transform the city of Cincinnati. And, you know, the citizens of my city stopped me on the street and said, here's what I want to see happen in the city of Cincinnati. And so you have the same responsibility. You have to get to your leadership. You have to impart your expertise. And you have to help the leaders shape the vision for what Providence will become. That's your charge. That's your challenge. And it's, frankly, your civic responsibility. Because if you think about it, this city has some really great aspects to it. And I've been touring all over the place, and I've seen a lot of great things. And many of the things that I've seen today were built by people of previous generations. So they spent their time, their resources, their money, their ingenuity, and they made investments for the future. So now it's your responsibility to make similar investments for future generations of people that you will never meet. But the goal is there. The task is sometimes difficult, but the responsibility is yours. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it.